Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to med school and other professional programs. Welcome back, future medical professionals. In today's session, we will be discussing important sociological theories and concepts that you may come across on the MCAT during that psych -so section. We'll explore functionalism, manifest and latent functions, conflict theory, symbolic interactionism, micro-sociology, social constructionism, rational choice theory, feminist theory, and social institutions. Woo! Oh, we're not done. And the four tenets of medicine. This is a action-packed video full of high-yield psych social concepts you need to understand to absolutely crush the MCAT. So to help you understand these concepts better, we're going to jump into these with a ton of examples. So let us go. Starting off with functionalist theory. Functionalism is focusing on the function of each part of society and how they contribute to social stability. For instance, the educational system serves to teach skills and knowledge, while the legal system maintains order by enforcing laws. This is kind of looking at society as a glass half full mentality. Sure, homelessness is a problem, but it serves a function by giving a labor pool for bad jobs. So this is sort of the approach the MCAT is expecting you to take. Functionalism means, yay, everything is good. Everything is there for a reason in a functioning society. Now, manifest versus latent functions. A manifest functions are deliberate actions that serve to help a given system. For example, schools are designed to provide education and socialized children, which are the manifest functions of the educational system. That's why school was put there. That is the key example. However, latent functions are unexpected, unintended, or unrecognized consequences of the manifest actions. So for the school example, we could see a latent benefit of schooling is childcare. Parents don't have to stay at home and take care of their kids. This allows parents the time to work and produce value for society and the country. Other latent functions could also include creating social networks and friendships among students. Now, contrasting functionalism, we have conflict theory. And this is based off of the works of Karl Marx and is focusing on how power differentials are created and contribute to maintaining social order. It explains how groups compete for resources to attain power or superiority. An example is the competition between socioeconomic classes, where wealthier individuals may use their resources to maintain the status and control over others. Okay, so a lot of big words. Basically, conflict theory, it's just communism. Um, these are the words you want to be looking for on the MCAT. <clears throat> The answer is always the most communist-y sounding answer. So you want to look for words like bourgeoisie or proletariat or means of production. If you see one of those, high likelihood the right answer is conflict theory. And conflict theory goes hand in hand with conflict sociology. Conflict sociology is the study of the way that distinct groups compete for resources. It's examining how power dynamics shape society, such as the struggle between workers and the employer, or proletariat and bourgeoisie, over wages and working conditions. Moving away from functionalism and conflict theory, we have symbolic interactionism. This is the study of the ways in which individuals interact through a shared understanding of words, gestures, and other symbols. For example, a handshake signifies agreement or trust between two individuals and many cultures, or at least before COVID it did, now it's more of a threat. And now to the small, to micro-sociology. This is the study of expressions, symbolic gestures, or other small individual components of a society. It's examining the nuances of everyday social interaction, such as how people convey politeness through body language and tone of voice. This is contrasting functionalism and conflict theory which are macro sociological theories. Next, we have social constructionism, which I took way long on this drawing. This explores the way in which individuals and groups make decisions to agree upon a social reality. The value they place on certain social constructs, such as gender roles, can be challenged and changed through social constructionism. For example, here, we have Pitbull writing the song, Hotel Room Service. Dun, 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 meet me at the hotel room that banger of a song. And everyone is thinking, you know what, that song, it really was a banger. We are agreeing, we are creating the social construct of Pitbull's hotel room service as the, the song of a generation, if you will. Next, we have rational choice theory. This is stating that individuals make decisions that maximize benefit and minimize harm, which is basically economics 101. 
For example, employees may cho choose to work harder if they expect a promotion or pay raise as a result of their efforts. Similar to rational choice theory, we have feminist theory, which explores the ways in which one gender can be subordinated, typically focusing on the experience of women. It seeks to understand and challenge gender inequalities in various social, political, and economic spheres. And finally, what are social institutions? Well, these are well-established social structures that dictate certain patterns of behavior or relationships. Examples include family, education, religious groups, and the government, each of which serves specific functions and shapes social norms. For example, if you were at school in America and you were in second grade, you would stand up and sing the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag every Monday morning. This was the norm expected from the government and school. And then finally, something relevant to everybody getting ready to take the MCAT are the four tenets of medicine. These are the four things that every doctor must agree to do, which are have beneficence or promoting well-being, non-maleficence, avoiding harm, respect for autonomy, which means honoring patients' decisions, and justice, having a fair distribution of resources and treatment. These principles guide medical professionals in their ethical decisions, making, and patient care. Understanding these sociological theories and concepts is absolutely crucial as a future doctor, as well as it is for absolutely crushing the psych social section on the MCAT. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.